This screencast is on equilibrium. In the screencast, we will we'll be able to locate equilibrium on the graph and properly label the equilibrium price and quantity. We'll also understand what it means to be at equilibrium. Equilibrium is an economic situation in which no individual would be better off doing something different. In this situation here, we have our market for shoes. And because I have the title, I can, on the horizontal axis, just put a Q, because that means the quantity of shoes. And on the vertical axis, I've got the P for the price of shoes. In order to figure out equilibrium, I need to look at my demand curve, which is downward sloping, and its relationship with the supply curve, which is upward sloping. To figure out equilibrium, you go to that intersection of supply and demand, and that gives you your equilibrium price and quantity. Um, as the way to label equilibrium price and quantity, you cannot put equilibrium EQ right next to the dot. When labeling equilibrium price and quantity, it has to be done along the axes. So at the intersection of supply and demand, draw a line over to the vertical axes and label that for your equilibrium price, and then draw a line down, and that will give you your equilibrium quantity. Now, I chose a subscript of E because to me, again, the graph is speaking to me, and so this is for equilibrium, the equilibrium price and the equilibrium of quantity. Um, you don't have to use the E. On the AP exam, they could tell you to use the market price and the market quantity, and so they could say to use an M, and so that's what they'll ask you to designate it with. You have to follow the labeling of the AP exam. If you're just freehanding it and you're allowed to label it however you want, you could choose the E's as your subscript. You could also use 1's, and you could have P1 and Q1. Whatever you choose, the subscripts have to be the same when you are labeling. When I think about equilibrium, a few things pop in my head. The first one is quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. That is what this intersection is showing. Now, what I have seen as a mistake is that sometimes I've seen people label this as like a QD, saying this is the quantity demanded. And while it is the quantity demanded, the intersection of the supply and the demand curve create the equilibrium quantity. So it's not just quantity demanded, but it's quantity supplied. And so you don't use these as your labels for the intersection. Instead, you use equilibrium quantity, or Q1, or QM for the market. What equilibrium is not is it's not where demand equals supply. Because what this is saying is this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve. And the two curves do not look the same. The demand curve is downward sloping because of the law of demand, and the supply curve is upward sloping because of the law of supply. And so, therefore, the formula for equilibrium is not demand equals supply. Equilibrium is allocative efficiency, producing that right mix of goods, or producing what society wants. At that intersection of supply um, and demand, that is telling you the exact amount of how our resources should be allocated efficiently. Another way to label supply and demand is with marginal benefit and marginal cost. We could uh, replace the demand curve with the marginal benefit curve, the additional benefit from consuming one more unit of output. Or we could replace the supply curve with the marginal cost curve, the additional cost from producing one more unit of output. That intersection of the marginal private cost and the marginal private benefit gives us that allocatively efficient amount. Another way of talking about that marginal benefit and marginal cost intersection is by saying they're meeting at the margin, because this is where the two marginal curves, benefit and cost curves, um, intersect one another. When you're talking about equilibrium, you could also talk about Pareto efficiency. Pareto efficiency means that one party's situation cannot be improved without making another party's situation worse. Uh, it's also known as Pareto optimality, and this is an economic state where resources are allocated in the most efficient manner. So again, that allocative efficiency. And what you see is that prior to the intersection of the supply and the demand curve, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. And so if I consume one more unit, 
I am benefiting, I have an additional benefit, and while the distance between the two isn't as great, I'm still adding to my total benefit. And, and I will continue to add to my total benefit up until the point where it intersects. Anything prior to that, the additional cost is greater than the additional benefit. So it starts to subtract from my total surplus or my total benefit.